With no loyalties and no winning moves, Liz Truss faces the endgame. One of the notable things about last week's death march at the Conservative Party convention was how many MPs, advisors and other observers were skeptical of the idea that Liz His Truss would not be the party leader in the next election. I was wondering if you understood. Replacing the Truss seems unlikely, especially given the recent leadership contest circus. But even among parliamentarians who did not campaign for her removal, few found her to be absurd. This is a dangerous situation for the Prime Minister. It is entirely possible to keep the Conservatives in check while being genuinely disliked by some of them, at least for a while. Both Boris Johnson and Margaret Thatcher, Our Lady of Iron have proved it. But what about when people's minds start passing you by? This is different. How did this happen? The satanic state of the polls as an obvious starting point. It would be a big challenge to expect Conservative MPs to accept a 30-point deficit, even if they support the projects they pledged in the election. In despair, the suspicion grows that there is no viable trust project at all. The crux of the matter is simple. To reassure the market, Quasi Quarteng has promised cuts in public spending to offset his £43 billion in unfunded tax cuts. But there is no politically viable path to reductions of this magnitude. Where can these cuts be made? You can't get there by cutting the budgets of every department slightly. What that brings you is the many toxic little stories leaked to the press, such as the proposal to cut train travel for ex-military personnel on Remembrance Day. It's the sort of thing that comes to mind when asked for. Even though Truss has promised to supply Northern Powerhouse Rail with electoral trains, saving capital costs won't get you there. No, the only way to save up to £40 billion is to drastically cut the most spending sectors such as health, jobs, pensions and education. But in a speech in Birmingham, Truss cited the ambitious goals of her close friend, Health Secretary Therese Coffey. This means more pressure elsewhere. But a leader who does not tangibly demand the allegiance of his party cannot impose his will upon ministries. So Truss is in danger of an even bigger reversal of welfare cuts. What remains of education? We haven't heard much about it yet. Quarteng may also hope that lawmakers, who have campaigned for years for a new state funding scheme and better deals for local schools, will approve drastic budget cuts. I can't. I want to be in the room when he makes that request. She will either back down, fight in the House of Commons, or risk more market turmoil if she doesn't balance the books. Her efforts to reimpose her powers on the government, let alone the Congress party, are hampered by the fact that she chose to undermine the Downing Street operation. And the institutions such as the policy department and the legislative team were greatly simplified, the latter is now made up of one person. On paper, you can sketch the route back to the truss, so to speak. Call for a mandate to pay more respect to the 2019 manifesto, focus on the few victories that can be achieved by 2024, and persuade a different approach in the next elections.